guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Robotech Attack on the SDF-1. It's for two to four players, but you could probably play it solo if you wanted to as well. It takes about, I would say, 90 minutes to two hours, maybe give or take, depending on if it's your first game or not. And it's for ages, I'd say like 15 and up. In this game, you're basically going to be playing on the SDF-1, which is a ship in space, and you're going to be working together with your crew or your other players that are playing with you cooperatively to stop the Zentradi from basically destroying your base. You're going to have a player board, you're going to have a board which is based on the armor of your ship and how you're going to have guns or losing them. You're going to also have a really interesting base that can actually transform as well. And basically the uh, enemies are going to come in from all sides and they're going to move, they're going to fire, they're going to be doing damage to your base, they're going to try and infiltrate your base. And if your base explodes, you're in trouble. Or if you manage to wipe out all the waves, you're going to win. And there's different campaign scenarios as you progress throughout the game, you'll be able to fight different campaigns and trying to deal with different types of threats. There's large ships you're dealing with, small ships, as well as even little peons that you have to mess around with as well, all while working between your character's limits. Some of the characters actually can pilot the ships kind of like Battlestar Galactica, and others are going to be maintaining the hull of the ship or rotating the ship to a certain degree. It's very much like Castle Panic, but with a lot more added to it. Let me go ahead and show you the game down below. I'll give you an idea of how, all the things you can do in the game. I won't show you the rules necessarily because there's a lot to this game, but I will give you the idea of what all the boards do and what you can do on your turn, your players, and all different cards in whatnot and then i'll give you my review of the game all right so are you ready let's go ahead and go through this monster well this is the game attack on the sdf1 as you can see there is the sdf1 it's actually a turntable board and it moves around using the captain character other players can do it as well i think but i think it's mainly the captain this is the sdf1 that turned into its like mecha form and you actually get to have this in the game and construct it and it looks pretty nice it does tend to tip over a little bit but oh well otherwise it looks pretty sweet and it is used for the game so let's go through all the components first, and then I'm going to give you the overview. This is the rulebook of the game. This is a bag that's going to come with all the pods, all the basic enemy units, and the only difference between them all is that they have a symbol on them that will direct them based on the order cards. So if one has an X symbol and one has a circle, circles might go clockwise and X might go forward, and then they may or may not attack as well. Scenario booklets. There's about five of these guys here, along with a basic introduction scenario, and they have their own unique missions that you go through, uh, you can play them in any way that you want, but in general, you're going to play them from zero all the way to, I think, five. Uh, you're also going to have these additional character cards that will be used in the different scenarios and character boards that you use in every game. On the character boards, it's basically going to come down to uh, what you can do. Moving, how much health your character has, how much... Uh, and one action for a resource, to gain resources cost, where you're going to start, like this character here is going to start at any inner area. There's also going to be actions, and there is a ton of things that they can do. They can inflict damage on their location, they can launch their attacks, they can gain movement, they can place an evade token, helping them evade enemy attacks, moving two pods, one space, or ordering a ver attack. There's also the ability to destroy pods. She calls us all that kind of good stuff. Uh, then all the characters do their own unique actions, and that's not only including the fact that they all have a passive, as well as they have bonus abilities here that they can spend these tokens to use them. This is a communal pool of action tokens, and these are very, very strong abilities that they can do if they have those communal action tokens to use. Uh, they also come with an extra Marco pool that says 2 plus launch bay. Each one of them has a specific area that's also denoted on this board as to how many actions they're going to get every single round. Okay, over here there's some additional enemy units that you can use for different scenarios. There's going to be these research tokens that if you spend them during the game, three will get you draw two, pick one, and five will get you draw three, pick, or draw five, or draw three, pick, draw three, pick two. There's objectives, which are going to be placed down the board, depending on the scenario, depending on what you need to do. They have front and back. You're going to have cruisers along with uh, these other larger ships. These are all capital ships, even though they both have different names. One has got four health and one has six. They're strong. They're dangerous. Quick reference card along with the sequence of play is going to be on the front and back. This is very, very handy throughout the entire game. As you can see, all the tokens will do stuff and it tells you how they function here. All right, let's look at the board now. So I already showed you this is the SDF-1 and it rotates and it actually is gonna have certain things like rail guns and where they're going to shoot from as well as the front of the ship and the rear of the ship and how it takes damage based on where the enemies are coming from, just like you would see in a game like Castle Panic or some other uh, 
area control, well, not area control, uh, tower defense style games. But as the board moves, this thing stays, all these characters and everything on the board stays the same, and so does this board. These are order cards. Order cards will allow you, if you want to order units, you will then say, I'm gonna order that unit. Flip it over. Is it a Veritech? Great. Choose one of the two different abilities to do. Maybe it's move one, do no damage, or do two damage and move zero. There's also destroids or scouts that you can go ahead and order. And after that, you're gonna put it on the bottom of the deck. And if you wanna order again, you can, you just can't choose the same unit. So you'll be ordering units and that's gonna cost you actions. The beginning of every scenario is gonna have incidents and they might be good or bad. Maybe move all pods from one inner area of the SDF one to an area outside. If there's no pods, you get to draw again. Or one hero is hurt during attack and takes one damage, move him to the hospital. So some good and some bad things can occur in this deck. You'll also note that Zentradi are going to basically invade every single time uh, the round is, is over, in which case an event will happen. Maybe it'll say replace two active mecha in any one area with pods, which is not good. Mecha is what you want, pods are what you don't want. And then of course Zentradi vessels are going to drop down the board. There's the A spaces on the outer edges. Those are where the guys are going to drop and it'll tell you. For instance, one cruiser's going to be put on A5, and four pods will be put on A2. These are the first things that will happen. You can spend these, like I said, to get resource cards. These guys here say something like, in, in the SDF1 areas, each mecha inflicts plus one damage when executing an order. Wow, that's really good. Uh, and then down here, these are orders for the Zentradi uh, after, or Trady, I'm probably saying that wrong, I'm sorry. But uh, after the round is over, the all the bad guys on the outside of this board are going to move. And they're going to move based on their symbol, in, on these cards. So for instance, the circles are going to shoot and then they're going to move. Uh, the uh, triangles are going to zigzag. Some of them are going to rotate in circles. All these symbols are actually denoted here on the quick reference, so it's easy. And it's going to be a rinse and repeat. Players are going to do all their actions after the incidents and the spawning. And then after that, the Zentradi are going to move, or trade are going to move, and do damage to the ship or damage to the people. Some people are able to get on ships and move along here, so they can actually do damage to the bad guys. And uh, that is pretty much the idea of the game. The board here actually has a, a bunch of different actions that can be taken, such as healing your characters, drawing cards from the, the laboratory deck or the uh, resource deck. You can spawn more mecha, which you can create one of the two different types, as well as you can launch from the hangar bay and you can uh, upgrade training center and whatnot. There's also guns that are gonna take place. This is the big, big baddie, right? This ship will transform into this guy here. And when that happens, he does serious damage in, in this arc and it will rotate the board just like you normally would, but you're not gonna be focusing on the boat, the ship here, you're gonna be focusing on this guy here. And he is really powerful. He actually can basically remove tons of models when you transform him. Uh, let's go ahead and set him aside somewhere. Now let's go ahead and look over at this board over here. This board over here is based on your hero actions at the beginning of your turn. Depending on how many actions you get is how many spaces you can move characters down the track. The farther you move them down is the more bonus actions they're going to get. So you're going to limit, be limited by bonus actions, but you're going to get more bonus actions than you... Uh, you're going to get more bonus actions based on the points that you spend for each character. Your population size, you're going to have a population that can be reduced or increased depending on the game and how it's going. You always want to have more population. Command, crew might be taking damage. There's certain loss conditions that you can lose the game based on the scenario, whether you get overkilled, like doing damage across a certain area to the point where they have it has no more armor left, then it's gonna start going down, down into your loss conditions. Certain scenarios will take multiple loss conditions, others will take not very many, like three. And then, of course, when you take damage, you might actually, from cards, lose certain guns. And when that happens, you're actually going to place these tokens on, like a beam or a rail gun, in which case you won't be able to use those, and you have to turn the ship in order to activate them. And that works for all these different areas. There's the launch bay, there's the, um, what is it, the science crew, and so on and so forth. And finally, over on this board here, there is a, basically a reflux cannon. The most powerful, uh, weapon you can use, it faces forward, and you're gonna be rolling die and assigning those die, so six to seven, over on this track here. You'll do whatever it says and then you can use it. If you roll too high, it might over overshoot or overheat and you might fail it. And char characters can actually reduce the heat on this gun as well. It's a very useful thing in the game though. Additionally, everything over here is actually going to be removed and there's only going to be a certain amount of the good guys that you can actually spawn in the game, depending on the scenario, how many of the different mecha you can make. And that's pretty much how that board works. It's gonna control basically the armor and all that for this specific ship. 
Throughout the scenario, there you have certain goals and objectives. If you complete them, you move on to the next one and continue the scenarios. Or if you take your losses, too many of them, you can actually lose the game. Uh, there's multiple scenarios. You can play off of the different types of gameplay, and you can even play single player if you'd like. And that's basically the idea for Robotech Attack on the SDF-1. Let's go ahead and give you my review. So that's the basic idea for how you play the game Robotech Attack on the SDF-1. And let's go ahead and talk about some of the positives and then some of the negatives for the game and whether or not you should pick it up. Firstly, this game has a lot of quality components. Just like all the other games I've played from um, Japan Anime Games, I've uh, had a really good time looking at the components. It's very easy to distinguish them between the differences, how they work with the targeting and the evasion tokens, the damage tokens compared to the weapon malfunction tokens. It's very simple as to how that all goes, where the characters start and how you can use them makes sense. It's a very simple idea behind the game. You're going to be spawning bad guys, taking your actions, and then after your actions, the bad guys are going to move and do damage to your ship. If you can complete your subject, uh, scenario objectives, you're going to win the game. If you take too much overkill or bridge hits, specific loss conditions, you're going to lose the game. But uh, it's got a lot of complexities. Now, another thing is this little guy here. This is actually part of the game, which is super cool. And putting it together was a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed that aspect of the fact that you feel like you're actually transforming and then just doing superpower blah 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 and blowing up all the dudes. That's that's a lot of fun. Uh, this game actually, from what I'm told, because I don't, I'm not a huge Robotech fan, I don't know a lot about the anime series, but uh, it's supposed to have the storyline from the original arc of the anime, which is super cool. And uh, the story does fit with all the different scenarios. And you're going to read them and it's going to come with the scenario booklets that tell you a little bit of how the story works and the situation that you guys are in. It's going to give you the different episodes as well as what you need to do, your situations and objectives. And so you got a lot of gameplay in this game. Um, the artwork is great. I like Robotech artwork a lot. I played a lot of Robotech games so far. I mean, you almost think I'd be a fan now just because I played all the games, but uh, it is really cool looking. Uh, so those are pretty much my, my positives for it. The spinning board is super cool. The turntable, I like actually feeling like you're moving the ship around. It's very, very, it, it, it works with the feel and story of the game. I think you Robotech fans are going to dig this. So the game is complex. And it's probably even too complex for me. Like, I understand it now, and it took me a very long time to grasp it. I had to have three people read the rules, and then we went back and forth until we figured all the things out. But once we got it all down, it was fun. We enjoyed ourselves. This is a very nice cooperative game, but it has, it's, it's very heavy, more heavy than I thought it was going to be. When I started reading it, I felt like, okay, Castle Panic, this is going to be a game where you're trying to defend your ship against the guys that are kind of coming in from the outskirts, and if they get in too close, they're going to start hurting you, and it is that in nature, but there's so many little parts to it. This action board here, there's each character has at least 10 things that you can do on your turn, and 10 things is a lot of choices, and for some of you, that's going to be really good, and you're going to know what you want to do. Maybe I want to specifically spawn Mecha, or maybe I want to move the ship, or I want to reduce the cannon, maybe I want to heal the hull, maybe I want to <laughs> use evasions or summon pods, move pods, uh, order the different Mecha in certain areas, do damage as myself, move out there and fight them. There's just a lot of choices. So in one sense, it's a cool idea. In another sense, it takes a long time to figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it. And for those of you with analysis paralysis, it can be very daunting. And even for me, I don't feel like I have a lot of analysis paralysis. I like to just get my turn done. Even in this, I was like, I don't, I don't really know what I want to do, guys. Especially when you have shared pool, these things here, when you want to use these tokens here. Uh, I don't, I just like, oh, these are all such good abilities. When do I want to use it? How do you want to use them? For you guys that are really in-depth gamers who are also big fans of the anime, you're gonna you're gonna like this game. If you want if you want something even meatier than Castle Panic, you're also gonna like this game as well. For me, it was just a little too much, too mind-boggling as to what's going on. Even though the premise seems simple enough, for some reason I couldn't wrap my head around it. Maybe it's my fault, but I, I just could I couldn't do it. Uh, if, if I had another player who had already previously played the game and taught me, like something probably like Twilight Imperium or whatever, then it would have worked for me better. But going through the rules, it was a little just daunting. And not only that, sometimes it didn't say certain things, like which guns do how much damage to the, you know, the bad guys. Well, it doesn't say unless you look into an example. And then one of the examples is like, oh, it does one damage, one damage, and one damage. Oh, okay, well, I would think the railgun would do more than the basic gun, but it doesn't. Unless it does this and it transforms and then it does damage to all of them and it nukes them all. 
Storyline wise, it's great, but the rules are just, ah, uh, you know, I'm looking at this rule book. There's, there's a lot and there's a lot and there's a lot and it's, it's, it goes over everything, which is good in one sense and crazy in another sense. So if you just don't mind this, you're gonna, you're gonna dig this game. I, I don't mean to be so negative about it, but it just, for some reason, I just couldn't do it, you know? Anyway, Robotech Attack on the SDF-1, I think if you saw the review and saw how everything works on I think you'll get a good idea of this game. It might be a little less daunting for you now that I went through it. So go ahead and take a look down below in the description. See if it's something that'd be interesting for you. But for me, it just, I just couldn't do it.